Let's keep going with uh, this idea of unity. Here's another quote. Uh, it's in the, it's in the uh, notes. It's out of a letter uh, written in 1897. But here's what it says. When Christ is not abiding in the heart by faith, there is discord and strife and but little effort made to get near to each other where we can be one in Christ. As we approach the great center, Jesus Christ will be our unity, which is as a wheel within a wheel. Imagine spokes on a wheel, and he's the center. And as you come in towards the center, no matter where you're coming from, if you're coming into the center, who are you getting closer to? Everybody's getting closer to everybody else. And this is what it's saying. Those who live in Christ realize the, gr the, the greatest harmony, heart with heart. Discord and strife are not found in that company who are sanctified through the truth. We need faith and love. Let's seek for it. I found this to be true. Christy and I have traveled all over the world, all over the world. And we meet people for the first time. And those who have the love of God in their heart, particularly who appreciate design law, the law of liberty, the law of love, the law of worship, they understand and embrace God's principles in their heart, there's a unity. There's a bond. We are connected. We, uh, we feel the non-judgmental closeness, regardless of denomination, regardless of diet. But when people cling to the imposed law view, here's the list of rules you must keep. There's always discord, always disagreement over which way you did this ritual, or what day you do that on, or what clothes you, or what food you eat. There's always argument, always division, because it's not about the heart. Even in the same denomination. Even if in the same den denomination you see these arguments and splits. Don't we? Yeah. Bottom green section... Uh, says, uh, who are the people whom, due to influences of your culture and society, you tend to view disdainfully or with lack of respect? Well, my blog a, a little more than a week ago was entitled, Christians Beware of the Trap of the Social Justice Movement. Anybody re read it? Contrasting God's methods of doing social justice, and there is godly social justice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't anyone suggest Jennings teaches that we shouldn't be socially aware and socially just. We absolutely need to be. But there's a godly way to do it, and there's a worldly way which only perpetuates more division and harm. And I dissect those two methods in my blog. This blog has had a lot of activity on the website with hundreds and hundreds of responses, and I've had to delete because I don't leave vulgarity on there if I see it. Um, more than 100, maybe 200 responses I've had to delete. But many, many people have responded from both sides. There have been vilifying statements against Donald Trump by some and vilifying statements against Joe Biden by others. And I delete all of them that I see because that's not what this is about. Are there people in our society that you hold disdain for in lack of respect. And if so, what does it say about you? And when I do that to people, and I've done that online with a few that were really, really antagonistic, it's always the same case. Those in darkness don't want to come into the light lest their evil be exposed. They never want to look at themselves and reflect because they practice the principle of projection. And so I'm accused of being insensitive. I'm accused of being a divider. I'm accused of being a racist. That's what they do. They accuse. Who's the accuser of the brethren? Yeah, if you see a lot of accusations constantly spewing out of mouths, Jesus didn't go around accusing people even when they were caught in the act of sin. Get your mind around that. Satan's method is to do evil and blame God for the evil. He accuses God of being the source. Watch for that method in our society, and you will get some good discernment into who's, who's motivating what, what activity.